uh, simply in that period of time, uh, changes in land use, we call changes in land use, uh, resulted, okay, uh, in the emission, that period, okay, uh, of about, okay, uh, 528 billion uh, tons of carbon dioxide, okay? And uh, to mention, of course, that basically half of this is almost uh, from uh, fossil combustion, to mention this point to you. This quantity, <laughs> okay, this quantity is about half, this is T, okay, about half the emission okay due uh, to fossils fuel uh, combustion which is basically uh, during, of course, the same period in which we took this measurement. Uh, during the same period. Okay. And this basically is a count, this half a more or less to about 1,040 billion uh, tons of carbon dioxide, okay? Uh, now, basically, to point that, of course, at the, t at the present, of course, it seems we have uh, two areas in which basically there is what you call uh, carbon dioxide emission. We have one of clearing of the forest, and we have one as the two major clearing of forest and also fuel combustion. Uh, so, to compare which one is more common where, okay, that is basically uh, to mention. Now, overall, overall. Now, in modern times, okay, most, okay, uh, carbon dioxide emission okay, associated with the deforestation deforestation have been occurring okay Basically, in uh, tropical, somewhere okay, in tropical uh, countries, uh, such as it, countries of Africa, okay, Asia, 
and Latin America. Okay. Uh, of course, in case, in contrast, of course, in contrast, okay, most, uh, the CO2 emission or emission from the combustion <clears throat> fuel this has been okay basically have been occurring have been occurring basically in industrialized <clears throat> okay we call them <clears throat> higher latitude uh, countries Like for example, Northern Europe, uh, Northern America, and so on. So basically, this is under what you call to finish what you call under the uh, what you call this item of CO2 from clearing forest, which is also as part of how increasing the atmospheric carbon dioxide. I guess you follow this one. <clears throat> then we're going to talk about the other item of the carbon, basically called global carbon geochemistry. <clears throat> Second here, just to make sure. Okay, so subtitle here. Okay. Can you just straighten it a little bit, please? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to go about global uh, carbon geochemistry. Okay, now, to talk about also in this case, for example, called the anthropogenic, <coughs> anthropogenic emission. Uh, basically have caused okay about uh, a 40 percent increase <clears throat> to occur okay uh, in the amount of CO2 is stored in the atmosphere. Okay, it's stored in the atmosphere. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you this uh, two reading, of course, from the pre-industrial and uh, till almost to, to uh, till the reading being done in 2007. Okay, uh, in the atmosphere, basically from about uh, about 580 times 10 to the power nine. Basically, this is ton, okay, of 
کربون دیکساید کربون دیکساید کربون اوکی دیس از کربون دیکساید کربون دیس از بیسیکلی اوکرینگ ان دی پری اندستریال تایم ان دی پری اندستریال تایم اوکی کمپیرد اف کورس تو about 810 times to 10 power 9, okay? This is, of course, the same thing, tons of CO2 carbon occurring basically in 2007, okay? For that, and I'm going to mention about the concentration, as a matter of fact, in the air, as a, a, as in a form of part per million. Okay. Now, just uh, I think if you see this one here, then going to continue like this. Okay. So this basically, in this case, going to mention uh, now the atmospheric. Okay, the atmospheric uh, concentration in this case of carbon dioxide has, of course, accordingly, accordingly, increased. Okay, uh, during the same period, uh, if you finish on this one, I want to put it here. Okay, this is of the same period we mentioned before, basically uh, from about. Uh, 280 parts per million that during the pre-industrial to almost to uh, 384 part per million. That basically give us the concentration in the air. The first one we talk about the consumption. Okay. Now we are going to talk about what you call the uh, uh, the gross primary production and the comparing between the gross primary production and the net primary production. Uh, do you remember that? Do you have an idea about it, the gross primary production and net primary production plant? I'm asking you. Usually when we talk about the gross primary production, that when you take a measurement of the total amount of the plant able to do a photosynthesis, that is how much photosynthesis has been done, okay? But of course, when the plant will do a photosynthesis, okay, then some part of this energy is going to be used for respiration and so on. And of course, the remaining of that is going to what you call to, uh, to, uh, to, be, to be transformed to the net production of the mass, the material of the plant. Okay, so the gross primary production, that means include all the amount of photosynthesis done by the plant. The net primary production, basically from the gross, you took what is the plant used for energy, for respiration and so, and what is left to what you call to produce the mass tissue of the plant. Because in reality, that is the mass tissue of the plant, which you remember, that is the one in which even if the plant is going to die, it's going to go in the soil and so on, and that is basically is going to be a carbon there. Did you follow this point? So that is the two points I'm going to talk about at the moment, okay? To mention this regard here, that it seems before what you call the uh, anthropogenic was so high, there was a balance, okay, between these. Now, this is what you're going to talk. Before a human began to modify 
the character of Earth before humans uh, began uh, to modify we call it the character of Earth's ecosystem. Ecosystems, okay, particularly, as I mentioned to you here, basically by deforestation. Station. To make in this case the global emission the global emission and fixation the global emission and fixation of atmospheric carbon dioxide carbon dioxide, were probably in balance. Okay, they were in balance. Okay, in other words, what it means, in other words, okay, what it means that basically on a global basis, on a global basis, that you call the gross primary production. Okay, that means the total amount of the photosynthesis done by the plant, called gross primary, the, the total amount which of the done by the plant for photosynthesis, which usually we refer to it as GPP, the gross primary production was about equal equal to ecosystem called to ecosystem respiration okay and uh, biologically fixed carbon Okay, basically that was, basically was not changing over time. Okay. So now basically we come less being stored to make sure see now. So in general, this would put it down here. Overall, that modern that modern terrestrial ecosystems.
ecosystems are storing about Uh, 38 percent less carbon in there. This is N. Okay. And their vegetation and about 12 percent less in soil and basically that compared with the pre-industrial time and 12 percent less in soil compared what you call with the pre-industrial time. Okay. So basically at the moment we are storing about less carbon in the vegetation. Okay. And also when of course, uh, because in order to come to the soil, of course, when the plant will die, uh, that basically would come stored in the soil. So in the soil, of course, not all the dead plants are going to go in soil, some are going to be eaten by insects, going to be eaten by animals. So and only what is left basically to be what you call as litter left inside or uh, in the soil or decomposed in the soil. Now, of course, as you know, really one of the major uh, uh, factor that really absorbed as a sink in our time for the carbon dioxide is the ocean. Okay, which is absorbed a lot of this. And in the end, of course, that basically will play a big part, the oceans, in at least in equalizing the amount or, of this carbon dioxide. And of course, what happened when the ocean being carbon dioxide dissolved in the ocean, of course, it's going to precipitate as uh, bicarbonate and so on. And that basically is going to what you call, in the end, uh, participate in what you call, in making all these shell animals, okay? crustaceans and others to mention this point for you here and that's why the ocean really play a very big part at least in what you call listening or making less carbon in the air because it absorbed quite a bit okay so to mention this point here ultimately the oceans are the most important, and as we call, they are they called as important sink, are the most important uh, sink uh, for the carbon dioxide emitted as you mentioned, through human activities. Okay, method, what you call as uh, during uh, human uh, activities. And now to give you an, an estimate how much roughly the, the ocean will absorb okay uh, to make this point here okay uh, the oceans okay uh, have a net absorption has a net absorption uh, of about okay uh, 2.4 time uh, 10 to the power 9 tons per year. This is tons per year, of course, of carbon dioxide in what you call in a form of uh, uh, carbon, carbon, 
carbon dioxide of this course as a source of carbon uh, from the atmosphere. Just a Okay. But this amount in which basically the, uh, the ocean able to absorb or to use it is basically much less what, as than what as the human is producing. To mention this point here, okay? okay. However, this is less than This is less than what you call it uh, of the anthropogenic. Anthropogenic. This is anthropogenic. We call emissions, which is basically of about we call eight point six times. 10 to the power nine, the same thing, ton per year of carbon dioxide, carbon, because, that the, because the carbon from the carbon dioxide, okay? And as the, uh, the ocean absorb less and less than the human, so basically what's going to result, very simple, that the amount of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is going to increase. That's what it means by this one here. And, and that's going to mention to you here. And so, the amount, okay, of CO2, which is stored in the atmosphere, Okay, is of course is increasing. Okay. Uh, now to, to mention, of course, the, that the ocean is still able to absorb a lot, and of course, where is going to go all this amount being absorbed, which is, as I mentioned, uh, to be transformed into a form of biocarbonate, and that basically in the end what you call accumulate the sediment, which is basically used uh, uh, in a form of shells of these mollusks and others. To mention this point here. Now, uh, the ocean in general, <clears throat> the oceans have an enormous you call it enormous capacity for absorbing uh, what you call atmospheric uh, carbon dioxide and uh, as you mentioned which is basically which ultimately Okay, is stored, okay, as calcium carbonate okay, which is Ca CO3, okay, which is simply as I mentioned, this is three here, basically a mineral. that accumulate okay that accumulate in sediments in sediments and as i mentioned to you between two brackets these sediments basically are mostly 
as the shells. Okay, of, for example, as you know, of mollusks. And of course, and other invertebrates. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, finally, I was uh, from this section, of course, what, what we're going to point out that uh, as a matter of fact, uh, based on this and based a lot of publications and paper and so on, that means in reality, the climate change is happening now. And to give you some evidence, which is already you may know, I'm not going to go in detail of that. So try to finish this section here. So now this point here, okay. And maybe subtitle to mention this one here. The, the title I'm going to mention, Evidence of Climate Change. Okay. Uh, very simple to mention, and this basically based, of course, that data from uh, tens of thousands we call it of peer-reviewed scientific paper or studies of peer-reviewed uh, scientific studies, okay, which basically done or conducted about a decade or more, or more than, to, just to mention over decades, sorry, studies uh, conducted. Over uh, decades, Okay. Uh, simply to mention, uh, have led uh, uh, to the conclusion okay, that simply to mention that climate change Okay, it's happening now. Okay. Uh, I'm going just to mention, I'm not going to go in more detail, but just to mention some of you, uh, what to call observation and the current here. And just to, to mention this point here, that, and here are a few evidences. This is a few, okay, uh, evidences. Uh, simply to mention, of course, that basically, just to mention that a bit, one of these evidence, of course, as a, a measurement of the temperature, uh, for example, between 1906 and 
2015. Uh, simply dimension. Okay. Did you finish on this one? Okay. Then I'm going to put it here. Okay. That uh, between 1906 and 2015, that uh, Earth's uh, average. Okay. A global, we call it global. Uh, surface temperature okay uh, basically rose or increased okay uh, by about one degree Celsius and that is will it comes around one 0.8 Fahrenheit, okay? And it seems most of this uh, increase occurs simply since the 1970s. That is basically the, the thing happened. And to mention, and uh, much of this increase okay, uh, took place Okay, since mid of 1970s. Mid of 1970s, okay. Now, uh, according to the recording of the temperature, so, uh, which is basically started say about 1861. It seems most of the hottest year occurred in this period of basically uh, 2015 and 2014. And to mention to you here. Now, the other point for all the other evidence nine of 10 of 10, or simply to mention of the 10. Warmest year okay on the record because that basically uh, I think I don't think there was a lot of record before 18 something like that uh, record since 1861 uh, have taken place. Okay, uh, since year 2000, okay. So as I mentioned, basically, according to the record, the warmest, the warmest ye years on record Okay on record where, as I mentioned to you here, that uh, 2015 and 2014 respectively. So this is another. And now already, of course, you hear a lot of data in the news or something like that, basically, that a lot of the ice sheet is, is melting and so on. So this is another one here. And just to mention in general, in this regard here, that this is one of the evidence here. Now, in some part of the world, Okay, in some part of the world, to make it that glacier okay, uh, that have existed um, for thousands of years 
okay, are melting. Okay. Now, uh, in general, I'm going to mention uh, occur in many, uh, basically in Greenland, in Antarctica, all that. Uh, but in general, that's what it is. And now, the other uh, point I'm going to mention to you here, okay, because I try to reduce it as much as I can here. Okay, now. Uh, the other point I'm going to mention about the average of the sea level, okay? Now, the world's average uh, sea level also has been rising has been rising, of course, also as I mentioned, at an accelerated rate, at an accelerated uh, rate, and also seems almost like, especially uh, the measurement since around 75, 1975 and so on. Uh, to mention to you, especially <coughs> uh, since uh, 1975, uh, and of course, to mention that this rise basically is mostly due, of course, to the melting of the Okay, uh, due to the one thing, okay, to the expansion of the ocean, because once the temperature increases, okay, and also in addition to that, of course, the runoff from the melting ice and so on, because these two factors, okay, th this rise is mostly due to, to the expansion. Because when the temperature increases, the, okay, to the expansion of oceans, water, as its temperature okay, increasing. This is also one factor to that, and also the other one, and due, and two, basically, to, to increasing, uh, as we call it, basically, runoff from melting land-based ice. Okay. And the other point I'm going to mention, of course, already you mentioned also the in addition to two things which already we talk about the carbon dioxide, you remember, and also we talk about what you call the other gases which also do what you call participate in the greenhouse effect, which we talk about. So all these are rises to mention too. Okay, uh, to mention as basically atmospheric level, okay, measurement here, levels of also of uh, CO2 and also as you know and other uh, greenhouse gases. that warm, of course, uh, what you call the troposphere. The troposphere have been rising sharply.
And very simply, of course, as you know, as the temperature increases, as a matter of fact, many of these terrestrial marine animals, uh, freshwater species, start migrating, ha have the ability now to migrate to the uh, uh, to the north or the, the colder area in which before they don't go. And the same thing that would happen here. And of course, those which used to live in the poles, if they couldn't adapt, of course, going to result to their extinction. Just to mention this point here. As temperature rise, Uh, simply as temperature rise, uh, that of course many terrestrial, not only terrestrial, many ter terrestrial, okay, and also marine, and the freshwater species, Okay, have migrated okay uh, toward uh, the poles and of course and to higher elevation and uh, to a higher uh, elevation. And of course, what happened here, that of course the species that cannot migrate, or means, in other words, cannot migrate, or they cannot adapt at the same time, of course, very simply face extinction. Okay. So basically, these are some of the items to mention to show that basically that, uh, what do you call, climate change occurring. And of course, you may know also other factors or something else. So by this, basically, I try to end up this section in which we talk basically where we focus more or less around what you call the atmospheric gases and climate change. Okay, which mainly, of course, the focus was on carbon dioxide and also to know the chemistry of other gases, which help, as a matter of fact, with the, uh, the climate change. Okay, uh, then, uh, then I'm going to start now with you. Did you follow this one here? I'm going to start with you with uh, okay, uh, um, something else here, just give me a second. Right. The other thing which basically I feel is also important to know about, and basically uh, there are other items, hopefully I have the time to finish it. The, at the moment we talk about the solid and hazardous waste. So a title here, did you finish from this one? Okay, just give me a second. Uh, solid and hazardous waste. Okay. Now, really, basically, now we're going to mention 
okay, some of these factors here at the moment. Uh, just if, uh, as a general or introduction, which is already you may be familiar about here. Now, um, uh, around the world, as you know, around the world, uh, it was common Okay, uh, basically simply to mention to toss out. Okay, waste. Uh, an open dump. Okay. And simply as already noticed and everywhere that a human lived okay their trash accumulated okay and simply, of course, as the human population increasing, also this is becoming a real challenging problem now, even to the in that, to the environment. In addition, of course, to the health also, as I'm going to explain as we go through. Okay, as I mentioned, however, as the human population. grew or increases, and also at the same time, and the economic intensity and the economic intensity, we call it uh, increases, Okay. Uh, simply to mention, we littered earth. Okay, simply to mention, with more Diverse type of waste. Diverse types of waste. Of course, including toxic waste. And basically, these toxic waste, of course, at the same time, has a lot of impact to human and uh, okay to all that uh, things here. Okay, and now basically, I have to stop my lecture now, not for a reason because, uh, as you know, um, you have to do what you call the course evaluation. I guess you have the form on your D two L. With regard to term test, it's already been done and corrected, and hopefully, sometime this week, I will what you call uh, send it to you on D two L. Uh, and uh, do you have any question, please? I just had a question about the exam. What do you want to know about the exam? Um, will it be the same kind of format as the midterm? Like, will you be emailing it to us? Well, I'm going to see. Uh, either I email it to you or I may do it basically under the quizzes. I will let you know. Okay. Okay. But it's going to be the same style. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And the same thing, of course, uh, basically, I guess uh, this, uh, sorry about for it. No, this is Friday's holiday, not like that? I'm asking you. Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, because really in this case, basically, it seems uh, because this is Friday is going to be the second of, um, or no, just give it, uh, let me see now. It looks really sometimes the time it passes like anything. Yes. 
Okay, so basically we left only, I think we have what you call, hmm. Yeah, because if this Friday is the holiday, uh, we have to arrange a time in which we to do your presentation. Can you think about that? Because uh, uh, though basically what happened here, the reason I'm saying this, because according to the last lecture or last teaching week, is going to be what you call April the 9th. Are you following me? Okay. And your exam is almost the next day. And I try to avoid to do that. So how we, okay. I know some teachers have done like a, a recorded kind of video for presentations. If, if that was possible, maybe that would help just to offer a suggestion. That means you were recorded, you mean? Yeah, for one of my classes, we recorded um, our presentation and then we just submitted it. Well, actually, what happened here, I will, I, I may do something different in this case. Uh, what I will do, because the idea it is that you prepare your PowerPoint, not like that. Okay, so in that case, what you will do, you send me your PowerPoint and your report. And then I will, and then I will value it. Is that clear? to send you like a video of us presenting it or just the PowerPoint? Which one is easier for you? Because to me, the point is if you have the PowerPoint, I'm mean, just to mention to you my point here. If you have the PowerPoint, okay, uh, reading it from it, I don't think it's going to make, because the idea of the presentation is going to be a questionnaire. You got this point here? And as we don't have this questionnaire, so basically, and or even I will leave it to you. Either you want to send it to me just the PowerPoint, or you want to record and send it to me. Is that okay? Yeah. And plus, you have to send me your report. If I think so. That's the best way, I guess. Yeah, because you can send it to me. Because what happened here? Uh, if you get a problem, let me know. But you, you can send the email as attachment, okay? Because I don't think your PowerPoint is that large. It's going to be, a, because the, the idea it was about 10, 15 minutes. So that basically gives you no more than a 12 to 15 slides. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, so basically now I have to leave you some time to do your, what you call the, do your evaluation. I have here one chat to see first of all what they're asking here. That works for our genetic class. Which one do you mean? By sending the PowerPoint, you mean? She was just talking about doing the recorded presentation. Yeah, because basically recorded is okay because it may end up vertical. Because in my opinion, once you send me the PowerPoint, then I can value your effort and your work and what you are going to say. You got this point? Yeah. Do you Simple want as this. Do, All right. Do you okay, then. Okay. We'll have a good day. And we'll talk to you when is going to be our next lecture coming, I guess. It's going to be next uh, Tuesday, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Have a good holiday. Email Take care. Me the PowerPoint. Should we include speaker notes or something, or would you just like the PowerPoint? Well, uh, I will leave it to you. If you want to leave a speaker point or anything else, or to, to, to send it as a video, is I leave it to you. All of them, I'm going to listen to that. Okay. You got this point? Good. I guess so, yes. Yeah, because, because what happened here, Friday is a holiday, and then we have a Tuesday, and also we have what you call the Friday the 9th. Uh, and because what happened next day, you're having your exam. The final exam. Okay, if I finish it by, uh, basically, if I finish everything by Tuesday, then I will make uh, what you call, then I make a Friday for you free, because you need some time also to study, huh? Okay? Yeah, take care, bye-bye. I have to stop now the, the Zoom, okay? But please do the evaluation. Thank you.